Well, if you see something on there, like, you know what, Carla, I really want to know about the city of Hemet. Send me an email. I will reach out to them to see if they want to do a quick 10 minute interview that I can go ahead and straight. They are not live, they are pre recorded. So that gives the entity an opportunity to kind of prepare themselves, not get nervous with questions, but it also prepare them to come back and do a live interaction with those clients. Okay? So you're more than welcome to check those out. So upcoming events that we have, we have the Small Business Bootcamp. It is completely free to you if you are interested in doing anything with Sacramento Academy of Community College District. So they have the Chafee, Victor, Victor Valley College. They will have a Small Business Bootcamp starting next week on the 4th. In addition to that, some construction, so if anybody do construction or construction related services, some construction is having a massive matchmaking event on May 11th. That's your opportunity to meet a lot of other companies that want to partner with companies like yourselves to secure some of these contracts. I will full disclosure say the majority of that work is going to be in San Diego. Okay? We also, in our office, have had a visit with the County of Riverside and the City of Moreno Valley. Those are live sessions. I think they're not, I think they're webinar, not in person. But you have the opportunity to ask questions. Ask questions of these people to see how do I do business with you? What do you look for? I do X, Y, and Z. How do you purchase that particular service or product? So we do have those series that roll up as well. So now to the good stuff. As you can see, I can talk a lot. So if you have questions, please stop me and ask me. Okay? Can you go back and join the uh, Yeah, no problem. That was it? Yeah. On our website. And what I'll do is I'll provide you with a digital copy of this. All the links are live. So you are more than welcome to download all of these just to sign in. Um, so that I can make sure I get that out to the rest of this everybody on the sign in sheet. Oh, thank you. No, and in my email at the end of this, so if you email me, I will email you the flyers for the first two. Because those are not my events, they're partner events, and I can send you that information. So the agenda, like I said, I talk a lot, I talk fast, so if you need me to slow down, slow me down. I've been talking about this for over 12 years, like I said, so I can just talk and talk and talk, so if you have a question, please ask me. It's going to get overwhelming really quick because there's different sectors and we are essentially going to take the trip. So once I leave one destination for another, we're not going back. So whatever I said for that one is not going to be applicable for the next one, okay? So we're going to cover the acronyms. What do I mean by acronyms? If you're looking at contact and opportunities to make you more competitive, you should be certified. But there are different kinds of certifications to make you competitive. There's not one universal one. So we're going to go ahead and go through those. Then we're going to take that trip that I told you about. We're going to go down the federal lane, the state lane, the utility lanes, and then our private sector. Notice I do not have cities on there and I do not have counties on there. This class is on certifications. And the biggest question is, who cares? Let's figure out who you want to do business with, which is like, who cares? And what do they care about? So that we can properly identify what's going to help you be more competitive. Okay? So first things first, if you're looking at contracting and certifications to make your business more competitive, mind you, getting certified does not guarantee you work. I repeat, it does not guarantee you work. It makes you competitive. So if I put on a contract, I say you put on a contract, and it's for a small business, if you're certified, go have the leg up. But it doesn't guarantee she's going to get it, but she'll have the leg up. So you want to be able to make yourself competitive. But before you even get to that, you want to make sure you have these basic steps in place. Make sure you have your EIN, make sure you have the proper licenses, your permits, everything that is required for you to be an actual business. You want to make sure you have a business checking account. That may seem trivial to you, but a lot of companies still can recall their funds with their personal. You need to make sure your business account is completely separate from your personal accounts, okay? Secondly, you want to make sure you identify all the owners and their ownership. If you are a corporation and you come to me and you're part of work 50 great, let me see your documents. Because your taxes tell me something different and your minutes are something different and maybe your stocks. We need to make sure everything is the way it should be across all different documents. Okay? A lot of times people are like, well, we're 50-50 on paper, but all the taxes were this, and we need to be the same as possible. So we need to make sure all your corporate docs are in order. In addition to that, if you're a corporation, you need meeting minutes. And you're going to be like, hey, Carla, you know, I've been around for five years. I have a corporate book. 
a little bit dusty, never really opened it. Guess what? We're going to open it. We're going to open it and we're going to have meetings for the next five years because we need to provide that for these certifications. So we need to make sure your corporate documents are in order. Same thing with LLC. If you're an LLC, you have to have those LLC documents in order. So props are easier, DBA, and we're covered. But if we're looking at LLC and corporations, we need to make sure those corporate documents are in order and the owners are properly identified. Okay? And then lastly, you want to make sure you identify your NEICS codes. Does anybody in here know what an NEICS code is? You want to go ahead and give us a. It kind of identifies the, uh, what your business does, the kind of industry it is, whether it's oil business or cable business, profit uh, sharing. Exactly. So depending on what it is your business does, there is a six digit code. And if you're at any construction law, but if you're in construction, you may have six different codes. If you're a consultant in, just say you're a CEO coach and an HR specialist, you might have an HR code, an admin code, a management code. You can have multiple codes. They don't cost you to search them. They're completely free. But you want to know what your codes are. Because when we're looking at certifications, they will ask you, what are your codes? So you want to get that done in advance. Okay, those any ICS codes also, FYI, can be seen on your tax returns. So if you've ever seen your tax returns for your business, under activity code, that is your any ICS code. If you've ever opened up your business checking account, they ask you for an any ICS code. So you want to make sure the proper ones are being used for your business, because in the long run, it's going to affect you if you're applying for certifications. Okay? Can you tell us what you get the code from? Yes, So you go straight to that link, completely free. Remember I said, no more than my favorite, favorite phrase? You click on there, you can go ahead and add a keyword. So if you put in their editorial, it'll spit out the code for it. Literally, you just write them down because you're going to need them later. Okay? So I encourage you to pick all the codes that are applicable to your business and your expertise. Okay? Now, the big thing that I talk about before we even get to certification is the magic number. You can tell me, Carla, I want to be woman owned. Fantastic. But are we 51% woman owned? That is the magic number. And not just in ownership, you have to OCN it, own it, control it, and manage it. You have to be able to approve all three. Whether you're doing minority owned, disabled veteran, veteran, woman, you name it. The magic number is 51%. Ownership, on paper. 51%, we're good. Control. Do you control the business? Do you have the proper licenses to run You have to be the broker because that broker. the business. The majority of what I'm going to cover today, you can have zero dollars in revenue. Okay? You can be a business one day, so you can go ahead and apply tomorrow if you want to. So now the biggest thing are all the acronyms. So as you are looking to do contracting, okay, you are going to see acronyms thrown at you. This is the alphabet soup of acronyms. So depending on how you are owned, you are able to see if you can qualify for any of these designations. Now, I will tell you, people will come and say, why do you want to get home with certified cards? It's fantastic. There's three different kinds. So we need to make sure you know who you want to do business with, okay? So I'm not going to go through all of them, there's a whole bunch, but you got MBE for minority, WB for women, 
Um, don't be OSB for women-owned small business. You got BOSB for veteran-owned small business, DBBD for disabled veteran business enterprise, SB for small, DBE for disadvantaged business, SDBO is being for service disabled veteran owned small business, um, LGBT for lesbian, gay, tra transgender business enterprise, and you can't give me one more. Um, but you have a whole bunch. You have a whole bunch. Excuse me? Yeah, the whole PowerPoint is going to be yours. The whole PowerPoint. Oh, okay. No, no, no. The whole PowerPoint will be yours. I will make sure they get it. No problem. It's a lot of information. So it depends who you're contacting with. Okay. Because not everybody cares about the same thing. So different sectors have different preferences. So that's why it's extremely important to figure out who do you want to do business with? Because if they don't care about these ramifications, then you don't need to get them. But if there's some inch of it that it has some kind of a supplier diversity goal, then you want to be able to help them reach that goal. And this is what that takes you down. Okay. There's a lot of different acronyms. So like I said, at the end of the day, you really want to identify who do you want to do business with. And not necessarily directly. You can be a subcontractor. It doesn't matter if you're not a direct contract holder. Even as a subcontractor, these still help you to become competitive. Okay? So the biggest thing I always ask is who cares? Who do you want to do business with? What do they care about? Because I just gave you a whole bunch of acronyms but not everybody there cares about them. So you need to make sure you identify who you want to go after. You got the federal, state of California, public utilities, corporate America, Department of Transportation, federally funded projects, you got Metropolitan Water District, and you got other agencies and cities. That is how I break it down into those seven areas. Okay? Not to say you can't go after all of them, you mostly most can't. But I do not recommend it. You want to focus your efforts in certain areas so that you become successful. I do not want you putting yourself up so thin that you're not successful when you're trying to go after them all at once. Focus on who you want to go after. Research them. Do they buy the service or product that I have? Research them. Okay? That is going to be key. Research. Okay? But that is where we break it down. So we're going to take a journey. And go through all of this. And I know I can't be you in dinner, so I'll try to get you guys done by eight. <laughs> so the first time we're gonna go is the federal. So anybody in here ever thought about doing business with the federal government? One, two, three, a couple. Okay. So the federal, everything at the federal. I'm not talking states. I'm not talking cities. I'm talking the big guy. Department of Defense, Army, Navy, all the federal level departments, okay? If you want to do anything at the federal level, anything, you need to register in SAM. SAM is a registration. So I don't want to hear you say, I am SAM certified. The SAM does not certify you, okay? SAM is a registration that provides you access to new bid opportunities for the federal government. SAM is a registration that will allow you to get paid if you have a federal contract. SAM is a registration where you will self-identify yourself as what you are, whether it's minority, woman, veteran, etc. Okay? You are not SAM certified. Uh, when I was working on my registration with SAM, they would express that they now are registered with the federal government. No. Hmm. To do the registration? No. No, SAM went through a change. It's gone through a couple of changes. So most recently, April 4th, you used to have to have a dense number. I don't know if you had a dense number. It's no longer needed. SAM will now close off what's called a unique entity identifier. So it replaced us. They will issue you that UBI. And you do not need to prove anything with COVID. You just do a normal registration now. It's, it has its glitches. Um, I tell everybody you're going to love or hate sound or both. Uh, it's a process. You guys did it, so did you do that an hour, two hours? Okay.
Yeah, you can't do this. Is this is the first door? If you can't unlock this door, you're gonna be stuck. Okay. So that salary information is key. They do ask for banking information. If you get paid, that's what they're gonna pay you. So you have to be able to provide that. They're gonna ask you for your NEICS codes. You have to be able to provide that. Um, basic information which you're gonna answer plus answer some questions that are kind of a little bit like, why are they asking you this? Um, but they provide you the information for those questions. It can take you from an hour to about two hours to complete in one city. Okay? But did it cost you guys anything? No, I, the issue that I had was when I was going to the sound. I was going to be right here. Okay, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I registered almost six, seven months ago. Is it? I mean, is there anything that you would recommend that I can do to promote my, you know, my business? Because I don't hear Is it active? Okay, so once it's active, that's all. Keep in mind, it is solely your registration. So now it's up to you to go look for the contract opportunities on the federal site. They don't send them to you. So on the SAM site, I think I have it on the next screen. Is that like a, um, I forget the name of it. Is that like a Salesforce site or something like that? No. No. Okay. Uh, well, I don't have the link right. But on the main link, it'll say their contract opportunities. And you're able to go in there and look for those opportunities directly. Uh, I would also suggest, as my other site coming up, when you do the sound registration for everybody else, you create an SBA profile. And the SBA profile is what the federal agencies use to source contractors for smaller contracts. So if your profile is not done correctly, they're not going to find you. And a lot of times, it's not even your fault, it's the system's fault. Because the way it's designed, it's the very last button before submit, and then I think I showed you, it blends in. You can't see it. It blends into the back of the public page. So you're so used to hitting save and continue, that by the time you get to the very last, you're like, oh yeah, finally. You save and continue, and you forget to hit the SBA. So we can always go back in there and just look at it. If you want, schedule with me, or one of my one of my kids, so we can look at your profile to see what's going on. Okay? But they do not send you good opportunity. Okay? So in the SAM system, it is free. I repeat, it is free. If you Google SAM, you're going to end up on a third party site. You're going to want to charge you $500, $600, maybe a thousand. Completely up to you if you have that kind of money and you want to spend it on that. It can't stop you, but SAM is free. You do not need to pay anybody for that. Okay? If it doesn't end in .gov, you're on the wrong site. You're on a third party that's going to charge you. I will guarantee that the one you're paying for is not worth it because you're still doing all the work. It's still all your information. Okay? Sound needs to be renewed every single year. Okay? They will email you nine days in advance to go ahead and update your registration. The updates will only take you 15 to 20 minutes because it does hold all your information, just got to renew it. So that part is easy. If you make an error or something's missing, we can always go back in and fix it. And then you're only going to be down for about 10 minutes. And then you're back up and running. Okay? Uh, there's also a PTAC. Are we in contact with PTAC or not? The Procurement Assistance Center, we have one here in Riverside. Uh, they have a federal contract. The PTAC. P T A C. They're out of uh, Riverside Community College District. Their focus is federal contracting. So that might be also a good resource for you as well. But back to my discussion. The biggest thing at the federal level, first point of action, you have to register for that sound Okay. Now, how do you market yourself? You just put now sound register on all your marketing pieces. And you can use that new UEI number that they assign to you. Yes? Also, uh, one of the things that you need to find a lot of times you get from the Caltrain knows, so the chamber sends out those and you opportunity to go meet the clients, you got to go to those meetings and have the promotion. Yes. Those are not federal, but those are also important. So depending on who you want to look after, that goes to my DOT compensation. Uh, there are a lot of events for Meet the Primes, matchmaking events. Uh, you want to be a part of those. And I always tell everybody, the biggest thing with those events or being in the know is your ethnic and gender associations and chambers. Those are the biggest pushers of those events and the biggest collaborators. So you really want to be in, in sync with them. I 
The capability statement? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can write it yourself. You don't have to pay anybody to do anything. There is a template. There's a template you can use that focuses on the key areas. I will tell you, not two people are going to agree with what it should look like. Everybody has different styles. Um, I have a group of five of us, and if you put the same one in front of all five of us, we're all going to have different inputs on it. I totally recommend if you're going to go to the SBDC or the WBC, do it yourself. Have a marketing person look at it, and have a marketing person look at it as well. And you can have more than one. So what she's referring to is called an ability statement. It's a one-page management statement that you create for yourself. So when you go to the week of week of fines, the business graduate meeting events, that is what you take. You can take your business card, but that one sheet informs them of what it is you do. How are you certified? What makes you different? What's your advanced experience? So you want to be able to take that. And you can tailor it to your audience. I have clients that will have them for the state, some for the utilities, and some for corporate America. So they are tailored specific to those audiences. But to your point, I would say run it by a marketing person and a contracting person. Because they're both going to have different ideas for you. Now, when that time is done, as I was saying earlier, you create an SBA profile. That is the database where they can find you if there are smaller contracts. But you want to make sure that your profile is done correctly. Because people will skip it, not knowing that they skipped it. And when the system pulls your information, it doesn't pull everything over. So we want to make sure your profile is done correctly. That's the first spot I look for. When you tell me, hey, where I got my Sam done? I look for you here. And I'm like, you did, but let's go back in and fix it, because you're busy stuff. Okay, I've had clients that have gotten calls from the air base. We have a small janitorial you know, thing. Can you come out and quote us for what we take the units? That did not go on the contracting side. It was literally a phone call. So you want to make sure you are active in the site and it's up to date. In addition to that, because that is extremely powerful, you can look for competition, see what they're what they're up to. You can look for partners. If you're like, you have a really big job, I know that I can do a part of it. Look for the company in the database. See if you can reach out to them and partner with them. Or if you're like, you know what, construction companies are the companies that will will hire you. Find them, reach out to them, and market to them. So you can use this database for your own resources to help you grow your business. Okay, so the fully powerful database. You can access that through sample. Now, certification. So I just gave you a whole intro to the feds. So at the federal level, you have a couple of certifications. Okay, you cannot repeat. You cannot access these certifications if your SAM is not done. SAM is a key that unlocks all these doors. If you jump to these first, you are going to be stuck in an endless circle because you're not going to get it. What happens is these pull from the SAM registration. And if there's no SAM, it's not pulling from anyone. So at the federal level, you have certification if that is who you want to do business with. So we have HubZone. HubZone, I've been this doing it about 15 plus years. I've only done three. Okay? That's discourage you, but there's not a whole lot of HubZone opportunities out there. HubZone is historically underutilized businesses in HubZone designated areas. So based on where the business is located, we punch it into a map, and it'll tell me you are hub zone qualified. That is step one. Step two now is 35% of your workforce also needs to live in a hub zone. Not the same one, but in a hub zone as well. Okay? So that's where it gets tricky. If you are home-based, and the house is located in a hub zone, and you are the only worker, bam, we're good. But the moment you start having four, five, six, ten employees, I gotta look at everybody's address, everybody's driver's license, and everybody's utility to make sure that they live in a hub. Okay? I will tell you this one is highly sought after if you're doing anything with aerospace. Okay? So like machine shops push for this hub. Because they do a lot of stuff with Boeing, with Lockheed Martin, with Great Beyond. That's why I see now with these. If you are not in a hub zone, please don't get up and move your business. First, research it to see if it's even going to be beneficial for you. So back on that SAM site, go to contracts and look for hub zone opportunities. Are there any out there? What it is you do? If not, then don't don't bother. So if you have a corporation that has a uh, 
Would they still be okay not at the corporation that's the state? Yeah, it doesn't matter. We're federal right now. We're federal. So they're going to ask you, where is that home base office? Where the public people will go, or if, or if all the transactions occur. And that's the other thing. So, so my business is just up in the nature of the business that the state mm -hmm. and the DEA is, uh, so this is somewhere in California, they will focus on the DPA. The DPA. And mind you, you can be another state and certify another state. These are federal. So these go across the whole U.S. So it's not just California, but I'm looking at where the focal point is, where I fall. So when you register in SAM, you do it once, you have to do it for each? No, SAM is one time. Okay. SAM is a one time central point, and that gives you the access to activate all these applications if you choose to. Okay? Good. If you have more than one business, do you have to register each one separately? Yes, because they're all, they're all their own entities. So you have to separate them. Now, on the one and one, it's a little bit easier. So magic number, 51%, okay? Woman-owned small business and economically disadvantaged woman-owned small business. This is the newest one for the SBA. The newest, I mean like five, six years old. Now, this one here, the biggest thing is, it's not all the codes. So back to those NEICS codes. It's not applicable to all the NEICS codes. So we have to run your code to see if it's on the approved list. If it's not on the approved list, you can go ahead and get certified, but in theory, you're not going to see any federal contracts come out asking for that designation. Okay? So I ask you if you want to go through, I want to say, I have to go through a process knowing that you're not going to get anything from the federal, you're more than welcome to. Other times, corporate America will take that as well, too. So it is free. But you want to make sure you ask yourself who is your target market? Because these are a process, and I don't want you getting frustrated and stuck somewhere. If that's not who you really want to go after. Okay? Now, on that woman owned small business, 51%, to qualify for economic disadvantage, it is $750,000 personal net worth or below. Okay? You can be EWOSB and WOSB, but just because you're WOSB doesn't mean you're EWOSB. Because that net worth is a requirement. In addition to that, back to my code. If your code says woman owned small business, do not bother with the EWOSB. You're doing more work for no reason. Okay, so the code will label it what you need to apply if it's applicable. Okay, so if you have a choice, do the W always be. It's faster. The quicker application, they don't, they don't dig in you as much. Now, processing for both for all of these is going to be anywhere from 60 to 90 days. Okay, so it's not something that you get right away. It takes some time to process the applications. Once you are approved, it goes back to that SBA profile, and that's where it appears. You'll get a letter, but you won't get any sort of documentation proof that you get a certificate. That will stay there. You can refer back to that database, and it will have that information on there for you. Okay? Now, on any of these federal, you have to be a U.S. citizen on anything federal. You have to be a small business, and you must be registered in SAM. Now, the big one, and how many of you have heard of the AA? What? What? The two Has anybody heard of the AA certification? I know why you talk people out of this, not into it. So, it's a good person here. Uh, so, the AA, I call it the top dog of certifications. It is a big dog. That is the beast of all certifications. Okay? So, this is going to be, you have to be in business at least two years. And not just two years, two years profitable. Okay? And even if you're only been in business, say, six years, if you're not making money, you're not getting certified. You have to have the potential to succeed. And there is no dollar amount tied to that. Okay? So when we say that potential to succeed, you need to make sure the business is coming up and up and up. We can't have you be steady. If you're making 20, 25, back to 20, it ain't going to work. You're not going to get served. This is a program to help you get your business further off the ground. So if your business is not even hitting the $100 mark right now, I will definitely pull off. Because this is a nine-year program. Everything else can be renewed. This cannot. And to kind of put it in perspective, people pay anywhere from eight to $15,000. That's $1,000 to get out with this. 
because it's extremely lucrative, but you have to know what you're doing at the federal level. Because if you go in struggling, those nine years are going to be over. That's when you Okay? Two examples. I have one guy that's in it, going on year five. He's hitting $10 million in revenue now. He started at $700,000. He's grown that company incredibly. Construction. Construction is huge for AA. Construction, janitorial, IT, and other professional services. That is really what I see for context. I have another gentleman, I, uh, HBAC, has it passed at 200 dollars fresh and it's been six years. He got a three mile opinion, too soon. He wasn't ready for it. Because you want to be able to dedicate a team to this. Because like I said, this is a nine year program. If you're going to struggle, you're going to waste those nine years. Because people grow at an exponential rate when they get certified if they really put everything behind it. Okay? Just to kind of put it in perspective of the requirements, they will tear you apart. They are going to run background checks on you. They're going to check your LinkedIn pages, your Facebook pages, your Instagram pages, criminal records, um, bank records, everything. And this is very intrusive in terms of eligibility. So they are going to go and find everything out about you. So this process can take almost a year to get approved because you're going back and forth explaining. And not just you. If you have other owners, guess what? We're going to be all up in their business too. We need to know who these other owners are. Or if they're just board directors, I don't care. If they're able peers, they're going to ask about it. So it's a very intrusive process. Yeah, we have a couple of members that are AA certified and contract with one trucking company out of Monrovia and others. And also, they cannot hire if they work. They all have to have uh, social security numbers, yes. education, even all the way down to the very lowest gaps in the building. Yeah, it's, it's, it's intensive, but you can be very successful, very successful. So I tell clients all the time, I get a request for AA at least once a day. I tell them all out of it, you're not ready. If you don't know what contracting is, or you've never had a contract at the state or federal level, you're not ready for this. Then if I know you here, I'm going to lose you. Let's start with the lower hanging fruit first. Let's be smart about this and create a strategy so that you can put a client here at a later time and be successful. Because I don't want you to waste a year and then be denied. Because I already know what they're going to look for. And I'm like, let's, let's back away from it. Let's look at the local market first. So, most, most people that you mentioned, they start with already kind of like established. We start off on the other or whatever, and then Move your way up. Move your way up. Because I want you to have a good handle on the federal market. Because once you're in here, you're going to dedicate a heavy amount of time. A heavy amount. Uh, and it's a nine-year program. I do nine-year program. It follows the owners as well as the business. So if you're an AA today, you can never be AA again, even if you have a different business. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. Or let's just say we're partners, but he's qualified. I'm only like ten percent. Doesn't matter because the business had it. I'm an owner. I can never get it on my own. Oh. Okay. So that's how important this is, but you really need to make sure you get your feet wet in contract and you really get a good handle. And that P-Tech that I mentioned earlier is a great starting point for federal contracting. They handle strictly federal contract and have classes on it. I don't teach those classes, but I have them, they teach that. Um, but they are an excellent resource and they're at good cost to you as well, okay? So the A that I think it's one that I normally tell people out of it because I really want you to be ready, okay? I'm doing two right now with two clients that have been in business for a good seven, eight years. They're ready. But just today, too, I talked somebody out. I'm like, you're only at 80,000, you're three years in business, three person operation, you're not there. You're not there. I go, let's get you there by going after the lower markets. Okay? So it's lucrative. Now, the biggest thing is you have to be socially and economically disadvantaged. Socially, ethnic minority. That's the biggest thing for this, ethnic minority. If you're not an ethnic minority, you are welcome to apply, but you have to prove that you have been socially disadvantaged. How have you been discriminated against? And that is going to go by a case by case study now to that analyst. I can't tell you whether it applies or doesn't apply, it goes to that analyst at that point, depending on what you are able to prove. Women are not automatic disadvantaged, by the way. 
my ethnic minorities are. So if you're a woman and you're not ethnic minority, you're going to have to come up with that. But if you're like disabled veteran, black, woman, that counts. But if you're disabled veteran, non-minority, non-woman, we need a we need a good white. I had a disabled veteran, uh, Caucasian. We couldn't get him certified because he couldn't prove that he had lack of opportunities for capital and education. He went to a four-year university, had lines and credits. Yes, you're a disabled veteran, but you have still had all the opportunities for all these opportunities. So when I say they're intrusive, they are intrusive. If you own child support, don't even don't even apply. That's a big no. It ain't gonna happen. If you own taxes, not gonna happen. Now let it go. If you're in bankruptcy, we gotta wait a couple years because we have to explain why were you in bankruptcy and how are you better now coming out of it. So it's intensive. I know I'm like, oh, it's not to scare you, but people hear AA and they will come to me dead set. I need to get an AA, and I'm like, well, why? Well, somebody told me. Yeah, they tell you everything behind it. So it's not to discourage you from it, just to make it a reality to understand that there are other ones that you can utilize. Okay. Now, with that said, to segue to her conversation, there is a BA certification. Let me get over there. There we go. So for my best friend in here, the BA. I got 10 minutes. I'm gonna go quick. 10 15. 10 15, okay. I'll go quick. So for my veterans, we have a veteran certification. If you are a veteran or a disabled veteran, the VA has that certification. The biggest requirement, 51% home control by the veteran. Okay? Easy application, one of the easiest ones. Um, and you are certified, and once you are certified, you can use that envelope on all your marketing devices. Okay? All your business cards, car wraps, anything you want to put it on, you are able to put that envelope to identify yourself as such. If you are not doing anything federal, I still encourage you to get it. And it is a good marketing piece to put up all your marketing material, especially in this area here. This area here is very pro-veteran and very veteran supportive. So that's an extra marketing tool that you can use for yourself. Okay. I'm gonna try to go quick, so I apologize. So just to kind of give you an idea of the goals, those are the goals for spending in all the different categories, okay? So we got 23 for small, five for small disadvantage, five for women, three for hub, and three for my disabled veterans. Okay, that's the federal spending. And the who cares is right there. So we have Army, Navy, Department of Defense, IRS, anything at the federal level. That is my who cares in this situation. Okay. Now we're gonna go over to the state. So the state of California, which is what I call my lower hanging fruit. Normally I say, forget the AA, let me start from here. State of California. State of California is race and gender neutral. They do not do minority and they do not do women. They do small business, small business public works, and disabled veteran business enterprise. Okay? So California will certify you one, two, or all three, depending on how you work with it. Biggest requirement, you have to be headquartered in California. So look at your DBAs here, you're good. The owners have to live also in California. They will not take outside, outside the state businesses. You have to be a business here in California. Okay? It is the easiest application you're going to do. You can literally do it in 35 minutes in one city. Okay? Nine out of 10 times, it will approve you on the spot. If it doesn't, give it a couple of weeks and it should auto approve. Okay? For my disabled veterans, you have to be 10% for your disability. And we need a current lead for it. Okay? So under the state of California, I normally prefer that one. And if you do have to go to it, but I don't have to do the same one, you like to the town? Nope. Okay. Remember what I said around the trip? I left the federal, now we're going to the state. None of this applies to the federal level. So that's why it's important to figure out which path you want to go down. You can only do one. No, you can do them all. Okay. But I don't want you coming to me. Well, I need to get women over to the state. The state doesn't look good. They look for small business. And that's that's what I'm here to kind of educate you guys on that because people will come to me all the time. Why well, I need to get women over the cool like, for the state. The state doesn't care. Let me reach the right one. So the state cares for small businesses, okay, and staple veterans. This is our page, and you can see my arrows there. You register, then you get certified. It's that easy. All central to one website, okay? Now, you can see also there, search for good opportunities. They will email you the opportunities. You don't have to look for them if you don't want to. They will email them to you as long as your profile is current, okay? 
It is a good way to look for contracts to revenue with the state, but also for sub opportunities. So if you're like, I'm not big enough for that kind of contract, still look at it because there's meetings. You can never get some of the people bidding on it. You can post your own advertisement and say, hey, I do poly of degrees. If you need somebody, call me. I'm certified small business. Reach out to me. You can use this to various different ways to make you succeed. Don't think I need to go after the big fish. Let's look at the small fish. There's small little contracts that you can go ahead and jump on. Okay? So when I look at the states, we look at companies or departments like Cal States, UCs, DNBs, CHP, all your state agencies fall under the state of California. Now the other one that we have under California, and this one is nationwide. So you can get one for every state that you're looking at. It's a DBE, Disadvantaged Business Enterprise. Every state has a DBE program, okay? This is for any, any federally funded DOT work. So Cal Transport, Metro work, any of the highway through construction, this is what they're looking for, is a DBE certification. Now you're thinking, I don't do freeways, Carla. Yeah. You'd be surprised because there's bungalows out there, so if you do janitorial, they look at janitorial DBE. If you do real estate and they're trying to clear up some old housing and they want to get rid of them, they do that. If you're boarding up houses or boarding up people, because that's just what you do on preservation, they do that as well. If you're marketing, they do outreach to town halls. All that money comes from DOT funds. So you need to be in the note if that's something you want to go after. Now, like I said, Metro, Caltrans, OCTA, any of my transit authorities is what they're looking for in that GTA. Mm -hmm. Biggest requirements for this, it kind of runs like the 8A, but not as strict. You have to be ethnic minority or woman. You can be either or both. Personal net worth cannot exceed 1.32 million. A big jump from my 7,750 from the 8A. Okay? 51% own control and manage, no fees. You can be in business one day. Okay? It'll cost them about 60 days approximately, and then you're approved for five years. You renew every year, you re recertify, but then the full renewal is every five. So, is, 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 Wife is 51, husband is president at 49, he does not want to give up that title. Yeah. You don't want to give up that title? Guess what? We're not going anywhere anymore. We're done. You have to have the title of chairman and president. You have to break it down. That magic number is 51%. Let me just keep the goals really quick. Let's go to the utilities. So the utilities now, we're looking at metropolitan water district. So, another lower hanging fruit, if you're looking to bring it to the utilities, MWD might be a good option for you. They will post their bids, they will email them to you, and they will certify you as a small business as well. And they are race and gender neutral. They do small business and disabled veteran. So you are more than welcome to apply here. It takes you literally 15 minutes. They don't ask you to upload nothing. I will tell you if anybody here doesn't know Ken Ashford over the water district, he is fantastic. Um, these people go everywhere, they're at every single event, and they will let you know where they're going to be. And where they're going to be, you're going to see all the other utilities because they travel events. So if that's where you want to break into, follow the MWD and look at their newsletter. They will tell you where they're going to be at for the matchmaking events. Okay. So this is their website. Like, actually, I'm lying. This website just changed. This is an old website. But you're going to look for the doing business with us, and you go ahead and click on their site. Now the big one that I do often is the utility one for all the others. So if you're looking at Edison, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, Comcast, Frontier, any of these big utility companies, they have a preference to do business with minority, women, LGBT, and disabled veterans. Okay, you might think, well, I'm not that big to do business with Edison. I don't care. They look at second tier, third tier, fourth tier. Let's just say I'm going to pay contract with Edison. I'm going to be held to the same standards. I need a contract out to minority, women, LGBT, and disabled. So second tier, third tier, it still counts. You might go, well, Carla, I don't do anything ethical. I don't care. They need tree trimmers, they need marketers, they need promotional items. They buy all kinds of stuff and services. So ask yourself, what can I do 
for them? What can I give them? What can I provide for them? Okay? So they have their certification. 51%, like I mentioned, is that magic number. It is valid for three years. No cost associated with it whatsoever. This is the website for it. Right there at the end of the day, apply. There is no workaround. Just click apply, and it takes you right to the application form. Okay? They don't ask you for much, and they should approve you. I'm going to take three or four weeks, but I've seen it done in a week. It just depends on how they're loaded. Um, but it's fairly quick, and it's valid for three years. So if you're all three, minority women, LGBT, you get all three, all the same shop. If you're only one, you only get the one. If you're two, you get the two. Just check off the boxes that are applicable to you. Okay? But this is for doing business directly with the utility companies. And the utility companies have a goal. They do 15% with minorities, minimum. And I can tell you right now, they hit 40%, 41%, 45%. They are actively doing business with ethnic minority and gender companies as well. Okay? They're extremely active. So that might be something you all may want to look at, okay? And like I said before, the utilities are right there, AT&T, Verizon, PG&E, gas company. Like if you do um, fingerprinting, they always look for that as well too. Fingerprinting, drug testing, all that for their employees. Um, maintenance of their vehicles, all kinds of contracts. Now the private sector. So everything up until this point has been free, except for this. If you are looking to break into doing business with companies like Apple, Target, Walmart, Bank of America, Disney, all these corporate American companies, they have their own certification. Remember when I said, I want to go and certify, well, which one? This is the third one of certification. So we have the utilities, we got the federal, now you got your private companies here. Okay? If you do not have experience at the private company level, beware. It's not as easy because those bids are not. Um, put out as easily. They will reach out to you if you fit their requirement for triple the bid. So it's easier to begin first, knocking on those doors, getting your foot in the door, because this one here, you're paying $400 for a certification every year. If you haven't cracked that code yet, that year goes by really quick, you have to pay for it again. So I really need you to make sure you're really comfortable with, with those opportunities there. So there's two different agencies. Our minority one, once again, 51% ethnic minority, same requirements, highest title, highest position, uh, must be a U.S. citizen and submit all the required documentation. That is their website. Once again, there, click apply now. Pretty straightforward. Then we have our woman one. The woman one, I like the minority one, but we're looking at women now, okay? But on this one, you do not have to be a U.S. citizen. You can be a permanent resident alien, and that is sufficient for this one. If you're both minority and women, personal preference, the minority. It's quicker, a little bit easier to understand, and they don't ask for as much documentation. Um, that's just my preference, but then I always ask you to go ahead and figure out who you want to do business with. Do they have a particular goal that they want to fulfill? Maybe a couple years back, Walmart had a big push for women businesses. In that case, that would be more beneficial. Amazon has a big push for minority businesses. Minority will be more beneficial at that point. Okay? So get to know who you want to go after. That's our webpage right there, certification. And then the who cares again? Toyota, Chevron, Disney, Bank of America, and those types of Fortune 1000 companies. But you do have to pay that, that fee once a year. My last slide. Okay, so I just gave you a lot of information. I think in an hour. Yeah, um, you have information that's sent out for Yes, you will get the entire thing. I do not hide from you guys. And I will tell you, it takes a good two or three times to sit with me to really grasp all this. Because it's a lot to take in. I don't want to go in, I need all of them. No, let's figure out who you want to go after so we get the correct ones. But just to kind of give you an inside look, documentation, they're going to ask for tax returns, financial statements, proof of capital, your banking information, resumes, proof of ethnicity, you name it. But just to kind of give you an idea, all your corporate documents must be in order. Or else, don't bother for a patient yet, just take care of that. Let's get the house in order first before we apply. Okay? I gave that guys a lot of information. I looked at my last slide. Uh, my contact email is right there. You are more than welcome to email me. I answer all questions. I try to answer them within a couple of hours, if not sooner. Um, I'm fairly quick. So if you have any questions or concerns, or like, I wanted to ask you this, I couldn't ask you, 
email me. I promise I do reply. Okay? Um, don't let this overwhelm you. It's a lot of information. Reach out to me. Maybe only one of these applies to you. We can go ahead and help you get that one that applies to you and help you create strategy. You didn't see cities or counties on here because I don't talk about this, this particular class, but if you want to look at cities and counties, we can look at that. I have a whole link list of all these links for various different cities and counties. Uh, so with that, I'm Viva. Okay, good. So I thank you all. No. I got twins. Okay, she's got babies, but I will give everybody your her information, and if you want to sit down and spend some time with her, I'll make sure you get that. I'll make sure everybody gets the presentation. I put the um, I put the uh, registration form, so if you please make sure you sign that, put your email on that, or drop off a business card, um, and that way we can go ahead and get your information. Um, I want to do two things. Um, I want to introduce two people before we have Rich come up. Uh, I want to introduce Ms. Stephanie Bruce, who is actually one of the owners of this wonderful society. And uh, I want her to give you an opportunity, I want her to take the opportunity to tell you a little bit about where we're at. Because so many people are like, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? I was like, I don't know what she's going to say. Where's the rock?
So that's important because the census tells uh, the state and federal how many people is in that district, which allow you to allocate money and resources to a community. So oftentimes we hear, oh, the community is underserved. Well, I can tell you right now, if you don't do the census, that's the reason why it's underserved. For instance, if a city is 100,000 people, but only 50,000 people do the census, guess what they're going to allocate for? 50,000. So then it starts going down to who vote. And then you're going to find out why the money never makes it into certain communities. It all starts with that. But uh, yeah, I'm actually the first black elected official in the city of San Jacinto. My man Malcolm is the first mayor, uh, black mayor, to vote in the city of uh, Hemet. Uh, which is really interesting because a lot of people don't know you know what's labeled the sun downtown. Uh, we do a lot in our community, very active. I have uh, Stephanie Bruce and a few others who created the Black Voice of the Valley uh, because we wanted to help get representation and make sure individuals uh, had the right people speaking up because when it's time to actually have representation, we want to make sure that you have people that are actually speaking on your behalf. And that's why I'm glad that her and Burke State and a few others. And I know she said it was 100 people living here. I think, I think we did the Black Voice of the Valley event. There were like 250 people in here, and it was packed. And I'm talking about it was, it was an amazing event that we had in here. Um, but yeah, I've been up since 5 o'clock this morning when Texas said, when I come, I was literally three hours away. So I wouldn't let you know. I do appreciate the work that you do. And, um, and I got to get up there. I'm a pastor too, so I wear like multiple hats. Maybe you're right, right? So I wear I wear multiple hats. I do a lot. They call me Mister Everywhere. So I get with you guys. I get my information. I am actively involved. Um, there's so much resources that many of you guys probably have no idea about. The SBA is one, but there are tons and tons of resources that are available uh, that I really want to help turn on to. But with that, let me go sit back down. God bless you guys. Thank you. And then I promise you after this, we're going to eat. Mr. Wallace, if you want to come and tell us a little bit more about the chamber. Because like I said, you guys are in one chapter. We're in Inland Valley, so we cover Temecula, Marietta, Menifee, Lake Elsinore. It's our first time in Inland, so that's very exciting. We try to get into all the different cities, but that don't always be happy to actually live down that way. But Mr. Wallace. Okay. All right. First of all, I want to tell you guys how lucky you are to have Ms. Gonzalez out here. Uh, she is going to be doing, if you miss something, uh, there is a webinar she's going to be doing out of Los Angeles with the African American Chamber. And I looked at the list the other day, there was probably about 600 people already signed up for this webinar. So uh, I'll make sure that Keisha gets the information so she can get it to you. But she came out here in person. So that was a pretty big deal. I want to thank her for that. Because I got an email from DC and some other places that we wanted to get everybody on this webinar. And then when I found out she was coming out here, that was all Keisha. And actually, we made the phone call and had her come all the way up to him uh, from wherever she came from to uh, wherever she came from. So, so that was a good deal that she came out here and spoke to us. And uh, as a member of the chamber, there are more opportunities for people to come out and make us aware of what's going on. Membership is only two hundred dollars a year. It's based upon not how many mixes we have, but what information that we can get to you to help you get your business to the next level. So I say, become a member, get on the team, and let's help each other move up. That's what we do. Our membership is $200 a year. For that $200, you get to be a part of what's going on here, but you get to be a part of what's going on in 13 other various cities and uh, mayors and Congress people and all these kinds. There's an election coming up in November, so getting out to go June, okay? There's one June, one November, so uh, get June, June is the primaries. And the ballots are actually going to be mailed out on May 9th. So May 9th, the ballots. Everybody in California, we can show them the emergency order. Uh, so everybody, when you ask for a mail out ballot, they're going to be mailed out to you May 9th. So, and if you haven't updated your registration, your voter registration, that's important too. Because if you don't update your voter registration, you're not going to get a vote for local issues in your community, like your school board or your city taxes. So that is important. That is so important going forward. I'm 
telling you, and I know every election cycle, they tell you how important it is, this is the most important one, this is the most, but it's getting more and more serious. So for us to be able to get out and make sure that we, if we're gonna complain about things, we gotta make some changes. Uh, I know with the, uh, with the different things that, from the history of what's going on in the black communities, and all of these different things, that we don't tell people our business, and we don't do this, and we don't do that, I, I think we're gonna have to step up and make some changes so that we can get some changes done. I won't take it. I always put people for the way you move. So I wanna make sure everybody gets to eat. I'll be after you, yes, sir. Uh, sir, I do wanna say this on, on that note. The real quick, there's 39 million people in the state of California. 22 million are registered voters. I mean, you guys a trivia quiz real quick. Out of those 22 million, how many you think are black? Less than 3%. I'm just giving you a number. There's 22 million registered voters. How many, in the state of California, how many you think are black in the state of California? Out of 22 million. Uh, a five million? Okay, five million? Come on. Two million? Two million? Seven. Seven million? Seven hundred four thousand. Oh, wow. I don't want to hear your choice. And out of the seven hundred four thousand, on only 33% of them. Wow. And that redistricting he was talking about earlier has a lot to do with it. Uh, the census have a lot to do with it. If you didn't turn in the census report, it's so true about it. that's where the money goes. If there are different nationalities that are filling up the census and filling out that paperwork, those are the groups that are going to get those funds. So you can't say, why do they give these people this and they don't ever give us anything? Because, and, and, and we don't necessarily, and I, I'm of the mindset that we really could do it ourselves. We can really take care of, I mean, I really believe that. So I'm saying if we put in to each other, we can get out much, much more. We can't talk about the Asian communities and how they move into the town, and how they take over all the stores, and how they do this, and how they do that. No, we need to be the how to do the people ourselves. So I'm not gonna take up much time to see the piece of vocals and nothing else. So uh, <laughs> my name is Rich Wallace. Our website is blackchamberofcommerce.org. We've got a lot of different events coming up uh, between May and the end of June team celebrations from here all the way up in the LA and all the way. Yes, ma'am, I see you next week. Uh, oh, okay. All right. I want to ask for one second to make two announcements. Sure, one is um, please support any local Juneteenth event uh, anywhere you're living. I have a friend who is um, in the Pomona area and she's getting a lot of resistance from the political community there. So, have a good Have a good me too. Yeah. I'm going to be yeah. Juneteenth is not Black history, it is American history. Yes, sir. And so, we need. For it. And last thing, so we need to come number two. Um, I am organizing an amazing mother daughter event. It's a Mother's Day event on May 1st in Temecula. Uh, we have a black woman that is an author that created a powerful legacy tool for mothers and daughters. So check out the flyer at the beginning and bring your mothers and daughters to come out and support. This is Mother's Day? No, that's uh, May 1st. May 1st. Oh, yeah. it's next week. So hey. the flyers are up at the front, so make sure you grab those on your way out. Sure. Okay. Uh, we're having our local Juneteenth um, celebration here on the 19th, and we're interested in looking for anyone that wants to get an opportunity. Um, and I just that to do it. Um, so just leave that thing off with you. That's the Sunday? That's the Sunday, June 19th. Well, if you have the Juneteenth events, email me, we'll add them to the Chamber calendar because we want to promote all the different events. So now we're going to do a quick wrap up, and I promise you, me, I promise you, I promise you, very last thing, I promise. So, Ms. Tonette, if you want to go ahead, she's one of our board members, she's going to introduce yourself. I'm going to go really quick. Um, she already mentioned, I think I know the majority of you all. My name is Tonette Mom. My company is a nutrition company, um, helps you with filling in the gap uh, of your um, nutrition. So, definitely, I put my cards over there on that. But the one thing I want to say is for those two things if you're not a part of the chamber, 
I'm going to tell you that you should, because the Black Chamber of Commerce is doing so many wonderful, amazing things. And I don't know how long I've been with the Chamber now, for a while, for a long time. <laughs> and I have just benefited so much in terms of meeting people, in terms of my business. So I just want to encourage you, if you have not, um, to do that. The other thing is that being a member of the board definitely opens the door to being able to meet a lot of people and communicate with a, a lot of people. We are in the process of looking for additional support in terms of our boards. So what I'd like for you to do, if you're interested in helping and volunteering, volunteering, did I say volunteering? <laughs> volunteering. <laughs> volunteering to be a part of the board if you have some extra talents or skills that you want to be able to help support this um, vision that we have. Definitely see myself, Nikisha, Tanvila as well, and one of our as well. Any of us um, can be able to help support in that. So we are looking for more people. All right, I'll do the drawing. Okay, okay we're so. do the first one is for the straight skinny was actually written by Jody Silverman, who's one of our um, members. So we're gonna be grabbing the offer. Okay, so we'll do the card on the Okay. She didn't get a raffle ticket. Who didn't get a raffle ticket? Oh, okay. We'll get your raffle ticket real quick. Can you get the other raffle ticket? Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else didn't get a raffle? Two? Okay. Three. Okay. Let's give them a raffle ticket. Um, did you? And then if I can show you, go ahead and give them a all right, so for the business card, we have, Tondola, did you donate this wine? No. Oh, you did not? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. I thought I saw you have Who else was getting the ticket? We have a beautiful bottle of wine that is donated by the US, USA Clothing Rice. Okay. Okay. So the business card? Yeah, for the business, business card. Business card, right? And that is for Sh Sh uh, Shanina Creativity. Sienna. Sienna, sorry. Yay! Okay, and then for this thing, that's for the last You will get to And then this is for ticket number two. I, I got it. Oh, 229. That's what happened. 229. Two, two, nine. Nine. Okay. Look at that one. 229. Two, two, nine. Okay. No? Okay. All right. Then it's ticket number. Uh oh. 220. Two, 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 is that 221? 221. Two, 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 okay. We can't get another one. <laughs> wow. That's zero. We played a lottery today, okay? Right? Okay. Okay, so we're gonna go eat, ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> 